Notion just brought us a really cool update to their layout builder. So let's jump right in and see how it works and what it means for your workspace. As you know, last year, Notion gave us the option to customize the look of database items. Whenever you open any entry in a database, right, and you hover over the title, you see this option to customize the layout. And once you click on it, right, we go into this uh, new layout builder where we can do a bunch of things, right? Like for example, we can uh, move our properties uh, outside, right, to this like sidebar. We can pin certain properties to the page title and so on, right? This is pretty much what was possible uh, up until today. But now we've extended the features and there are like three new things out of which two are super exciting and one is a quality of life improvement. Now, first, let's start with a small but very meaningful change. And that is that we can now set full width as a default for all entries in a database. And that's amazing, right? Uh, otherwise, it's always a bit of a pain, right? When we want to set something to full width, we have to go on the three dots here, right? And turn on full width. Or we, of course, can use a database template, right? In this case, and set up a new template and say, okay, everything that has this template, make it full width. But this is another place right, where we can set this now and just enforce it without any additional clicks or pages, take up the full width of the page if you want to. To do so, if you are, don't have anything selected in the layout builder, right, this option shows up on the side here. It says full width. I can turn it on right now. Everything in here will be full width. If you've accidentally you know, clicked on something and have highlighted this, you won't see it, but you can simply click into the white part of the page body anywhere, right, and you go back to the standard and default options. This was a small change I'm excited for, but now for the big one. Notion just gave us tabs. That's right. If you are again right here in your neutral page settings, you see we can change the page structure from simple to tabbed. And when I click on here, what you'll notice is that we get here, well, under the page title, this new content tab. And I can click on plus to add additional tabs. Now, this is pretty cool. So what can we do with it? Well, I can click on plus, And as you can see, I can now choose a related database. Right now, tabs are not fully flexible, right? They don't give us just like tabs and we can add anything below them. Basically, what they've done is we have one central tab, which is the old Notion page body with all the unstructured content that we're used to. And then we can add any number of related database views in these other tabs, which allow us to you know, portray the structured data a bit better. Now, this sounds a little bit complicated, maybe on abstract in theory, but let's look at it in an example and then it will all make sense. Here, right, I have my projects database. And one of the things that I have in my projects database is that I have a relation to tasks that belong to specific projects. So what I can do now is I can click on, uh, right, what I could already do before, right, just let's look at that first. I could go in here, right, and say, okay, show me please my tasks relation. And now all these tasks uh, show up here like this. I can, of course, also turn this into, you know, a relations group. Then I have a few more customization options, options but still, it, it's fairly limited what I can do, right? Uh, I can uh, maybe say things like, okay, here in my, um, I want to show certain properties uh, here, but that, that's about it in terms of customization and will always show all tasks that are or all entries that are related to um, projects. So it's not really ideal. So let's actually remove this for a moment, right? Remove from layout. Uh, we don't want to delete the entry, but we don't want to see it. And let's look at a new version. So I click on plus and now I can add tasks here. And now you see, rather than having this like sort of like weird uh, little uh, layout, I just get a complete database here with all my database customization options with one important uh, addition. By default, this is already filtered to only show tasks related to this project. Right? If we inspect the filter, we see only show things where the page is containing, uh, you know, like that are linked to this specific page on which we are looking right now. That's pretty amazing because now we can also go in, right? And we can say, well, I want to customize this. I want to, for example, uh, in terms of properties, I don't want to show the project because I know it is related to that. So let's hide this. But I can also now set filters. I don't have to look at all the things. One of the biggest problems with these relation groups previously was that it showed you all your tasks, whether they were done or not. Now I can say, well, I only want to see the open tasks here. So let's go to filter and say add filter. Uh, we can even say go add advanced filter, right, for the more structured uh, rules and say, okay, I want to show only things where the status uh, is not um, complete. Perfect. And now it will only show task entries, right, that are not completed here. I can then go here and say, well, tasks, right, uh, I actually want to rename this now that uh, this only shows open tasks. So let's call this open tasks, right, and it immediately carries over. I can then also add sorts, right, whatever my heart desires, I can easily do this. I could also go ahead and say, well, actually, I don't want to look at these things as a table. I want to have 
um, my board here, right? All the view options that Notion has, even the charts are available, right? To be loaded into this sort of uh, new tab modality. So let's quickly have our open task here, right? Let's co color the columns. That's always my preferred way to show this. Let's also make sure that on here, when we do this, we actually want to show, right? As in terms of the properties, the, um, the due date for our task, perfect. And then let's add a second view for our completed tasks. And I can do this either by right clicking this, right, and duplicating the view, or clicking on plus again, selecting tasks again, right, and saying, okay, here now I would like a filter, um, you know, and only want to show things that are, you know, where the status uh, is done. Uh, I can then rename this view. I can actually, first, I will change it actually to um, from a table to a list, because that's like a nice minimal look. And then I'm going to rename this to, you know, completed tasks, something like this. Perfect. And I can apply to all pages, save this. And now, oops, something went wrong while saving the left. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and now we see whenever we open any entry in our Notion database, we have this these three tabs here, right? We have our completed tasks, which are currently empty, right? Nothing is completed. I have my open tasks and I have my Kanban board here. Let's open this in full page. And I have my content. And this is like slightly confusing, right? Content contains all the the other properties if you you know have a property group right with all the other elements or if you added anything else uh, to this database that will all show under the content tab and then below that you have your actual normal notion page body right the thing where you can type anything where you can you know add your headings uh, you know all the content to the page the other tabs don't have that right there is no page body below this to which you could add anything so basically what notion has done is they've split the section of a page into the main page, the one, the old one that we're used to, right? That's the content tab. And then specific tabs that show always one specific database view. So what does this mean for you and the systems that you're building? Well, first of all, as always with these updates, if you don't want to change anything, you don't have to, right? Uh, nothing, if you if you never touch this feature, uh, your workspace will not be affected in any way. You can simply always leave, you know, the, uh, the default of customized layouts to the section where it says, well, simple, right? I don't want any tabs. But if you care about it, uh, tabs actually unlock quite some interesting options. The main one being that you have the uh, option to create the sort of like a bit more app-like experience, right? In terms of the UI, this, this option right, where you can tap through okay content and then different related elements can be quite nice, in particular if you work with larger teams, right? Because it sort of like gives a structured way for people to access information. Now, of course, right, this isn't the only way to pull in open tasks. If you have used Notion for a while, right, you're probably familiar with the other default option, which are linked database views, right? Where we would go ahead uh, and we would set up a database template, right? And call this, you know, new project. And then we would go in here in the page body and write, okay, H2, right, um, tasks. And then say, okay, create linked database view. And now take tasks and say, okay, I don't want to see all tasks, right? I want to see tasks where, and then set advanced filter, the project contains, and then pick your the name of your template, right, which is always at the very top, new project. This creates pretty much the exact same situation. You have uh, your table here, you have full customization options, uh, you have your uh, advanced filter, uh, so what you have now here in this other tab, right, can also be in the content element of it. Now, the way I see it is that probably uh, the option to pull, you know, certain database views into the page body will be used in more complex scenarios and the tab options will be used probably in simpler scenarios because it is fairly nice and straightforward, right, to just have here at the very top your open task, your completed task, right, if I look at any any new uh, element, right, if I just can, you know, write my comments here, actually, let's uh, take this one step further uh, and go to customize layout again, and let's move out, you know, our property group to the side, right, I want this in the side panel, and I just want to, you know, pin the um, status, um, that's about it, right, this is a more realistic look of how a database would then probably look like in production, so now, right, if I go to Notion data art combination, I can simply, you know, have on my, you know, my, my project briefing, uh, you know, briefing, uh, my, my documents, everything I can have here in the page body. And then if I want to look at related things, I can, you know, use these tabs to navigate them. Very nice, simple look. I pretty much like the straightforwardness of this. However, in more complex situations where you, for example, um, work in a, in a team environment, right, where you want to guide people through several steps. So let's say, for example, right, uh, you have uh, you have a big OKR or something like that, right? And as part of setting up a new OKR, you want people to first set up uh, the new projects that belong to it. Then you want them to define X, Y, Z. Then, right, if you want to guide them sort of through a lot of steps, 
then I think it still makes more sense to, you know, set up these uh, database templates where you then go into page content and say, okay, you know, tasks, you know, please set up the tasks for the project. And then you could, you know, go further and then say, okay, and the next adding, you know, like documents, uh, please set up, you know, you, you get a gist. If you use the page body, for these databases, you can give additional context. You can use all of Notion's blocks, right, to explain the steps that are supposed to happen here. And you can, you know, um, yeah, build a lot more elements around it. Whereas the tabs, of course, always only show you that. It shows you only database, right, without any additional information. So for simple use cases, right, where you just want some structured data, I think these tabs are perfect. Whereas for more complex systems, where you need to do a lot of explaining around, or you wanna guide people through a flow, or where you just have a ton of related databases, right? If you have like dozens of them, well, you could set up tabs for all of them, but it's probably easier to have them in the page body. One more difference between uh, these two situations is that uh, in your uh, page body, you can also add databases that are not related to projects, right? If for, for whatever reason, right, you wanna have in, in, in a database, you wanna just show all the uh, the people, uh, all the events that you have, right? You just wanna embed an events calendar, but the events are not related to projects. Well, you can easily do this here, right? You would simply type, you know, H2 events, and then you go to, you know, create link database view, and you look for your events, right? All your databases will be available to show up here for uh, elements in the page body. However, for elements in the um, customized layout, right? If I click on plus, the only thing that I can add here are linked databases. So of course I could now relate events to projects and just not relate any entries, but that feels a little bit clunky. So uh, at least for now, while we can only add related databases here, um, it's not the ideal use case. So in this case, right, what we would need to do is we would first uh, say, okay, link an existing database. And now let's say, for example, let's take something where it makes sense. Let's take documents, right? These documents are actually related to uh, projects. Oh, I want them related. I can say, well, please add a new relation. Uh, we call this documents and projects, add view and relation, and now I have my documents here and I can pull them in, right? But it's not available for anything else. You see, none of the other databases in the system show up here as options. Funnily enough though, you can remove the filter, right? It says show only entries related to it. So if you were to go this work around, right, and say, okay, I want to have uh, all events showing uh, on here, but I don't want any individual relations, you could create just an empty relation and then go to the filter, right, and say, okay, actually, I want this removed. I want, I want, this, I want to show all the documents, right? Uh, this is what I like for whatever reason, and then apply to all pages, right? And now you see on every entry, we, we pull in just all documents that exist in our workspace, regardless of whether or not they are attached to this specific doc project. Now, a few more quirks uh, of this new feature. One of the really cool things about it is that it gives you this link existing option. That's a bit of a pain always, right? If you have like a, a, a you know a normal related database, let's remove all the things here in the page uh, body, uh, and pull in our other element. Here, right, in this situation with our related database, if I created a task uh, that I know should actually be related to this project, um, but I haven't done it yet, it's a bit annoying, right? Because it doesn't show up here, so I would need to navigate back to the task and then relate it. But here in these tabs, Notion gave us this feature, which ho hopefully, right, gets rolled out maybe here as well, uh, where you then say, okay, link existing. And now I can just like, sh it shows all my tasks in the system. I can, well, okay, this one you know, was supposed to be linked here. So that's, you know, a neat little uh, trick that you can do. You can also on the fly adjust your filters, right? So if you're looking at these open data, uh, open tasks, and you wanna say, well, actually, you know, what are the ones that are, you know, due on a specific day, right? Or something like that. For example, let's let's take this one, right? Let's say it's not April 8th, right? This is like an, an overdue task, right? Should have been done last year. I just wanna see, okay, which ones are the already ones, right? So let's say due date is, you know, um, uh, the, the, is, uh, before, um, you know, today, da, da, da. it's always like a bit annoying with these simple filters, fans ones much more. And you see now, okay, we have only our, uh, you know, currently overdue tasks. The interesting thing though, is that you see this orange little bubble. That's what usually indicates on for you on a database that you change the view and that currently this view change only applies to you and you should save it for everyone in order to, you know, have it actually go through with it. But on these new tab database views, there's no option to save it for everyone, right? So if I if I look at these, like there's there's nothing here, right, that lets me actually save these changes. So I can only reset it back to the default. So that means if I want to make any you know consistent changes to the database view, I need to go back to customize layout. That's different, right, to how this one behaves. Right here, if I go in and go to the filter and say, okay, let's add another filter, right? I want to add to my filter that the uh, due date da -da -da, um, is uh, before today. Right? it pops up automatically. 
And if this was a shared page in a team space, I would now get this little orange bubble here, right? It tells me, okay, with this button here that says save for everyone. That doesn't happen here. So, right, there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, and of course, whereas like here, the databases, uh, you know, you can then using the content method and the template method, you can then have different situations, right? You can change, like after you've applied the template, I can update this here freely and it will not affect any of the other elements here. Anything that you do to customize layout will of course be applied to all projects in your database. There's still no option, right, to say, okay, I want a certain customized, customized layout for these entries and another customized layout for these entries. Going forward, my team and I will actually start using this new tabs feature pretty much immediately for our client builds. Because I think that's where it shines. In team scenarios where you build systems for a lot of people and you need to, in general, simplify things, right? And give people like a sort of familiar structure. I think these tabs are amazing because they remind people, right, of a more of a UI that they are kind of used to, right? Where you have, you know, just like some free text here. And then I can see, you know, information related to my project uh, by going through the tabs. The person in me, right, that likes to do as few clicks as possible is like, oh, I'm not sure. I probably prefer this. But again, right, if you need to simplify a setup for a team, I think this is an amazing feature, particularly because it's harder to mess up, right? Uh, it just can happen, right, that someone presses Command A on a page body and removes it all, and then it's gone. Of course, you can load your, you know, template back in, and it's kind of there again. But still, right, like the uh, having these elements that feel a bit more, you know, baked in and less open in Notion can really help foster adoption in large organizations. Now, the big open question, of course, that comes to mind immediately around this feature as well is, can we not have more content tabs, right? It would be amazing if we not just had, you know, other databases in these tabs, but if we could just have, you know, content one, content two, content three, that would create so many cool opportunities, particularly for these long and complex scenarios, right, that I had mentioned, where you want to guide people through certain steps, right? Let's imagine, right, if you had, okay, for project kickoff, we have one Notion page body. For the main phase of the project, we have another one. And for the project retro, we have a third one. Right? This would unlock a whole new uh, range of possibilities. And we've already talked to a Notion team also and ambassadors like, like saying that we really hope for this, but it is uh, like quite tricky, right, to implement from a technical perspective because the question is then, okay, where do blocks actually end up, right, if you drag them into specific content tabs? So, so far, right, like uh, actual full tabs are still not something on the horizon. We probably will take a while until we can just type, type slash, right, and then tab and then get like actual uh, tabs just as a block freely available, but it's a really cool step in the right direction. And I think this really upgrades also the Notion database layout builder quite significantly. Now, one quick last thing uh, there, as I said, right, there's like besides these two more exciting things, there's also like a third small change. If you go back to customize layout, one thing that we can do is in the top section, right, if we have the heading highlighted where we can pin our properties, we can turn off the property labels, right? So status priority, right? For whatever reason, you don't want to see this. You want to just say in progress, high for like a cleaner look. You can do that now. I don't think this is the biggest change, but still, right? Like it's, it's nice to have this customization option. And there you have it, a quick walkthrough of the new Notion database layout customization features, right? That's a mouthful. Try to say that three times fast. Now, really cool update. If you have any other questions around this, right? Let me know down below in the comments. I'll answer all of those. And also, if you want to make sure that you always stay up to date with all these Notion updates, make sure to check out my website and matthiasfrank.de slash Notion updates. Because here we have a running log of all the things that change in Notion all the time. For example, did you notice that Notion buttons can now insert blocks at the top or the bottom of the date page, right? Or that you can build Notion databases with AI? So many cool new features. Now, after this, right, if you want to like continue with Notion learning, I also have a video with 117 Notion tips, right? Everything you need to know for 2025. I'll link it here or to the site. So if you want to watch more Notion stuff, make sure to continue with this one. Just click there and I will see you in a few seconds.